Hello everybody and welcome back once again to Let's Play Pillars of Eternity. In the last session we picked up another companion, Sagani, a ranger, accompanied by a, f a fox wolf apparently. <laughs> Kept getting my uh, animals confused last time. It is a fox, not a wolf. Itumak. And uh, we explored... Uh, the Wooden Plains. Forgot the name of it for a second. The Wooden Plains, where we found uh, trolls, pigwas, and lions, which proved rather problematic. <laughs> but we managed to get here eventually to the Edelwan Bridge on the outskirts of Defiance Bay, where no doubt we will be venturing today. Yes, indeed. But before we go clomping on in, um, just a quick update, of course. At the back end of the last session, I had to level Sagani up to level 4. So I, I did that. And uh, putting points into stealth as a hunter, I think, ranger slash hunter, I think she would have a, a high level of stealth, a high degree of stealth to uh, skulk in the shadows and camouflage herself when tracking prey. And survivability. I mean, she seems to be out on her own with a companion looking for this uh, Persock. She's probably a very hardy survival type character. So uh, they seem to be the best stats, uh, along with a bit of athletics as well thrown in. So uh, in terms of the abilities that I have given her, um, she already had Wounding Shot. I've given her Marked Prey, which boost the damage done against marked targets for both her and her companion. Well, that was pretty useful. And uh, in terms of talents, Vicious Companion to make her Fox uh, Companion Itamok do more damage and uh, bypass some damage reduction. So trying to get his DPS ability up a touch. And uh, also given her Envenomed Strike which seemed to be something that would be quite uh, roleplay friendly for a, for a ranger slash hunter. Mixing animal and plant venoms, applying it to the weapon, delivering a toxic strike that actually does raw damage. With no save, I don't think, so that's pretty useful. And she can use that three times per rest, so yeah. Tried to level her up with a bit of roleplay in mind in terms of her abilities, in terms of her traits and things. So uh, that is Sagani, now level 4, ready to rock and roll. Okay, so then, first things first, bit of gardening. Just say the word. There are some herbs up here. There we go. And second thing, second, I'm not going to be... All of these characters we know are uh, to do with the uh, the backer program. They're not really law friendly, but uh, I don't think Fedoran can quite resist. Uh, perhaps as he's walking past on the bridge, reading the soul of this character, purely because he has uh, a rather nice hat, <laughs> quite similar to his own. You see a ship being tossed about in a storm-ravaged sea. The swells rise and fall, carrying the ship with them as if it were a toy. This man stands on deck at the helm of the ship while water whips around him. The crew moves about frantically, trying to keep the chaos under control. He barks orders at them, pointing where to go and giving each one a task. The men, while still visibly distressed, seem to calm down when they are given their orders. He instructs the helmsman to resume his duties at the wheel and rushes to the aid of a crewman who is struggling with a rope attached to one of the sails. The ship crests a wave, going almost vertical in one direction and then immediately again in the other. Several of the crew are thrown from their feet, sliding across the deck as the ship rocks. After the swell passes and the ship returns to a relatively normal orientation, the man quickly scans the deck, counting silently. No one has been lost this time, thankfully. He looks in the direction they're headed, seeing no reprieve from the storm in sight. His jaw squared, his upper lip stiffened, he returns to the helm, 
and takes the wheel again. Hey. Mm. Look at this chappy. Head on fire. Okay, so quite a busy little bridge. And we got a change in music. Look at this. Welcome to Defiance Bay, but watch yourself in our city. Understand? Yeah. Okay, maybe go have a quick chat with this this fella, this guard. See if he's got any information. Maybe directions as to where we want to go. How do you do? What could I do for you? Hmm. Can't help but notice he does appear on edge. Thousands of them, truth be told. We got refugees coming in from all parts under some misguided notion that things are actually better here. That the legacy somehow passed us over. So they show up with no prospects and little money and just end up making a worse mess of things, looking us up and down. No offence. Well, uh, for Doran, probably straightening his hat and, you know, pulling himself upright, as if to say, I'm no refugee. I'm actually lord of a, of a keep, if you don't, uh, don't actually know. And what can you tell me about the city? Sorry, but I don't have that time right now. Sounds like... Dozen's crackpot Rowan is stirring up trouble again. He jerks his head at the gate. He'd be all too happy to give you a rundown of the city. Liberally flavoured, with Dozen's propaganda, of course. Dozen's crackpot. Interesting name. Okay, asking about uh, the Temple of Wodica. He scratches his beard. Not sure why you'd want to go there, he shrugs. It's in first fires, if you really want to see it. And good luck to you, he grunts. Okay, we've got an update. First fires. Okay. That seems to be the uh, the central district. We'll, we'll just take our time. We're not going to go rushing off. We're just going to experience the city and see what there is to see. Almost like a like a tourist. Just say the word. The expeditions out of Admeth's uh, den are just organised grave robbery. Hmm. Hey. Oh, we can actually choose where we want to go, but we can only go to uh, Copper Lane right now. 15 minutes. Only two hours to go until our keep is ready. It'll be ready b before we even leave Defiance Bay, probably. Defiance Bay, the city at the heart of the Deerwoods Revolution, now seems on the brink of another. Refugees line the streets, homeless and hungry displaced by White One's legacy, hoping for relief within the city walls and finding none. Dissidents congregate to protest and to heckle, calling for an end to Anamancy and the ouster of their duke. The city's militiamen cast fearful looks as they patrol the streets, their hands trembling at the hilts of their weapons. The capital of a country that had not long ago incinerated a god now appears to be a spark away from sharing the deity's fate. Oh dear, things not looking good here then, eh? Welcome to Defiance Bay. Perhaps we should just pass through very quickly before we end up uh, set aflame. <laughs> I should take the old helmet off for now. Hopefully not going to encounter anything too dangerous. Hey. Okay, so we're in the grounds of a, uh, well, yeah of a district within a large city. What on earth are we going to do? 
God only knows. So we got the goose and fox. The market. An expedition hall. Somebody's house. Somebody's house. Scrivener's dormitory. First fires is down there. The Hall of Revealed Mysteries. Oh, that sounds rather intriguing. Brackenbury. Out of the world map. And to the cata catacombs, eh? Catacombs. What is that all about? So we'll just... Uh, just meander our way. I think we'll start with the uh, the goose and the fox. Why not? Can't beat a decent inn, I say. But the old pallet. Those walls surround the whole city. Hmm. Not seen a city before, Sagani. Ooh, got quite a gathering here. Ready when you are. Hey. These animancers have brought divine wrath upon us all. And yet the Duke and his toadies in the Crucible Knights do nothing. Can we allow these atrocities to continue unchecked? No! Some protest going on here. Ah. Down with Adamancy! I wonder if this is the chap that the uh, Justicar was talking about. Where was legacy was one warning. Heritage Hill was another. Spread the word. Together we'll drive the blight of animancy from our city. Just say the word. Sorry to intrude. Good day, stranger. Ron's arms are crossed and his mouth is set in a grim frown as he watches the gathered protesters. He looks ready for a fight. He sizes us up. New in town, eh? You've picked an interesting time to visit Defiance Bay. All these refugees fleeing the frontier and finding the legacies no better here. It's the Animancers. Magra and scorch them. And they nest in this city like rats. You mark my words, though. Us dozens are going to put a stop to it. I wonder if that's... Oh, is that the name of the, uh, the group? Dozens? What, what, tell me, what, what is this dozens? He taps his chest. We're an organisation of interested citizens who want to free Defiance Bay from the dangerous influence of animancers and the tyranny of the aristocrats who support them. We also consider ourselves a militia of sorts, seeing as the Crucible Knights are little more than a flock of preening nobles in training these days. <laughs> Just like a militia, the dozens, except for the training, and the discipline, and the code of honour. But apart from that... <laughs> His eyes gleam. And we're always looking to expand. The more people see things our way, the better for the state of the country. You have any interest in hearing more? Stop by Admas Den sometime. The Expedition Hall. A lot of free thinkers in there. Can set straight all the nonsense the nobles and the animancers want you to believe. Might even be some paid work there for motivated types. Hmm. Well... The guard outside did say he would probably know more about Defiance Bay. Asking for some information. This is the capital of the free Palatinate of the Deerwood. We started out as the capital of an Adarian colony, but we booted the flaccid scepter from these lands 150 years ago. Oh god, hellfire. These days we're a major port receiving trade and visitors from all over the world. But we... Some of us, anyway, strive to hold on to the pioneering spirit that earned us our freedom a century and a half ago. The city is divided into five districts. Copper Lane, First Fires, Andra's Gift, Brackenbury and Heritage Hill. He ticks each off on a calloused finger. Uh, well, we're not really interested about these other areas just yet. It's the First Fires that we're more interested in, so uh, yeah, asking if you could tell us a bit more about the first fires. That's where the revolution started, hence the name. These days it's overrun with politicians and panderers, but we'll take it back someday. That's where you'll find the Ducal Palace, the Valian Embassy, ooh, and the Crucible Keep. He shakes his head. The Crucible Knights were the original freedom fighters in Defiance Bay, but now 
They're just strutting peacocks with their eyes on fancy titles and their heads up their asses. There's an old temple of Wodica there too. We keep it real nice for her. Giving us a wink. Okay, well that'll do for now. We can explore ourselves, these other areas. I don't quite like this fella anyway. Okay, and uh, what is this gathering here? What exactly are you doing? He gestures towards the crowd, which buzzes with angry chatter, trying to get folk to see reason. We're in the midst of a crisis, and instead of purging the nefarious forces from our city, the Duke is granting Animancer's dangerous liberties. <laughs> okay, so we know a little bit about Animancer's, in fact, speaking to one, beyond the veil, of course, asking him what he knows about Animancy. It's a study and manipulation of essence, which any sane person will tell you is the purview of the gods. The Adherents, at least, had the sense to outlaw it, which is the only good thing you can say about them. It's not like magic, chanting, or the soul readings these ciphers do. It's been around since ancient Engwithan times, which is why you'll see Animancer's tinkering with old Engwithan artefacts. He shakes his head. Trouble is... The Animancer's got no idea what half those artefacts actually do. Not that they'll admit it. <laughs> our, empathetic, our emphatic friend is correct about one thing at least. Okay. So uh, that is Rowan. And uh, a member of the Dozens. Hey. I got a feeling this won't be the last we see of this chap. Somehow. Hmm. Nice music. Hmm. Calm waters that smell faintly of refuse. Talk about ruining the mood. Right, this seems to be the inn here. What was it called? The Goosey Gander? The goose and fox. Ooh, fox is welcome then, eh? <laughs> Very good. Let's go in. One can always pick up the local gossip from an inn. Keep your ears to the ground, folks. But don't look anybody in the eye. We don't want any trouble. Okay, what have we got here? Ready when you are. Hmm. An upturned table? This Stelga's pelt is thick with dust and moths. The plaque below the beast... Oh, it's a... Oh, it looks like an overturned table. It's actually a... Uh, some kind of an animal. Hmm, how absolutely grotesque. Never mind. Lively place, isn't it? It's quite big, I'll give it that much. Something to explore on his own as well. I mean, goodness gracious, for Doran getting a bit brave, isn't he? Perhaps it's that. Fills him with all kinds of confidence. Nobody will touch a man looking like this. Noble looking, all these refugees. They wouldn't dare. He thinks. <laughs> he hopes. A dragon is outlined in charcoal pencil. The thick jagged lines and the faint smell of sulphur. I wish you could make this last longer. Suggest that the artist completed this sketch in a hurry. Look at this. Is this a lady? It is a lady. It's that all on her own. A woman sits by herself, spinning something on the table in front of her and watching it with furious intensity. It's about the size of a coin and it wobbles over a crack in the wood with a metallic rattle. She snatches it up with one hand and slams a half-empty cup down on the table with the other. This is not a good time. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> uh, is it a good... Should we honour a wish? Uh, as you wish. He's on his own. <laughs> Doesn't want to be attacked by a mad woman. Perhaps when he's got his friends with him, he might uh, pursue further line of questioning. 
A dwarf and an all in debate philosophy on the other side of the curtain. Oh, these little little booths. Isn't that lovely? What's the painting here? Glanfathon ruins. Woohoo! Wow, oh, ho ho! Fedora and getting a sense that the steward has got something to tell him. Their telepathic link kicking in as he's exploring the goose and fox. And before you know it, he understands what's been told. The keep is done. Well, for now, we are uh, in the middle of doing something. So uh, as soon as we get some free time, we will rush back and check it out for Doran Eager to see if at least the keep is in a state to welcome guests. I don't know, there's a door there as well. <laughs> Anyhow, let's have a look, quick chat with the barman, and then we'll perhaps take our party up and ch just challenge this woman. In fact, Fedora might even get somebody else to speak to this woman. Welcome. The man behind the bar is nearly the size of an Almauer. A handle protrudes from his back, and his face is set in a stoic frown. He gives you a small nod. Here for a drink? There's a tiny pewter cup in front of him. He turns it in one broad hand, but doesn't drink from it. Hmm, this is a, a lively place. Bit of small talk, always nice to start conversations off. It was founded in the early days of dear wooden independence by a travelling scholar named Errol of Levi. He wanted a place where kith of all backgrounds could gather and hash out the issues facing their new country. He rests his elbows on the polished wood of the bar. It didn't take long for the place to fill up. Brackenbury aristocrats argued with dock workers from the Greek gift, while soldiers wrangled with politicians. Dear Woodens have never been known to turn down an argument. He takes a sip from the tiny cup. Hmm. I can imagine things got rather interesting. Soon, kids were coming from the farms and settlements too. He waves at the door, as if expecting a crowd to bustle in. This place got even more popular, with the Valian sailors and the salty mast. And that was the problem. He drains his cup. No matter what the people say about fair-mindedness and civil debate, there's only so much people will tolerate. Errol found himself on the wrong side of an argument with the wrong Thane, and when he disappeared a few days later, some said it was the work of that Thane. He shrugs, spreading his hands over the bar as he surveys the room. But Errol knew which way the wind was blowing. If you ask me, he skipped town. Hid out somewhere, hoping for rational minds to prevail in Defiance Bay. He cracks a wry grin. <laughs> if only he could see it now. Ah, well, very nice story. And, and you? <laughs> Tell me about yourself. The name's Bishop. Used to be a scholar of Berath. Now I run the goose and fox and keep the regulars in line. He shifts and you see a warhammer strapped to his back. What more is there to tell? Religion from taverns. Surely an interesting tale. The journey isn't as long as you'd think. It started with Hollowborn and with this. He takes a black bottle from under the bar and fills a pewter cup. It was my sister's son. Takes a drink. At the beginning of Wydron's legacy. He was one of the first. I never expected there would be so many after him. Tragedy is part of the cycle, but it's followed by rebirth. Yet every year, more parents were grieving for their hollow-born children, and the gods were silent. Hmm. So you lost your faith. He leans forward, crossing his arms on the bar. Berath promises rebirth, cycles, but the only cycle I found was this one. He taps the bar. Have a drink, have another, and another, until I couldn't remember how I got home. Wake up, do it all again. I finally woke up one day to see my family had packed up and left. For all I know, 
They left days before and I just hadn't noticed. But they were gone. So I came here. I've cleaned up since then. Not that I've found my answers. He tosses the cup back. I just stopped asking questions. Okay, so okay. Well, he's a joy, joyful soul, isn't he? Oh, dear, dear, dear. Right. Um. Okay. Fine. Uh, let's uh, just have a look at your menu. Ooh, variety of different foodstuffs and uh, ooh, a yellow lab dog, just randomly for sale. We do need camping supplies, but we won't buy them just yet. We may stumble across some. And, uh, yeah, not really much else to speak of. How much are your rooms here? Ooh, look at this. We've got a variety of different rooms. Fletcher's Stay, Vixen's Burrow, Merchant's Stay. And we know how Fedoran does lack luxury. And we know how money does seem to flow through his fingers very easily. He is saving for keep up keep, for keep renovations and to, for spells for his uh, grimoire. But when it comes to sleeping, especially when he's struggling to sleep with all these weird dreams, if we do rest, it's probably going to be in the suite of worldly wonders or the Vixen's Burrow. Ooh, ooh, we'll have to make a choice. But we're not ready to rest yet, so, uh, yeah. Okay, so for yeah. Doran, what do we want to do? Do we want to go upstairs first, or do we want to confront this, 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 this lone woman? Relaying to the party. You just mind following me up the up, up here? There's still an interesting woman I'd like you to meet. Hey. Yes. Here she is. <laughs> uh, if you wouldn't mind talking to her, uh, Edda, I'm sure you'll get along like a house on fire. Hey. <laughs> Shying away from confrontation. I am not really in the mood for small talk, as I told your friend over there. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing here? She takes a long drink from her glass. Just trying to calm down and trying to talk myself out of something foolish. Uh, something foolish? She says nothing for a few moments, as if hoping you'll leave. At last, Kenra looks up at you, and lamplight falls across her face. A purpling bruise is blossoming along her cheekbone. Oh dear. There's something I need to give to my fiancé, Pernisk. Only he doesn't seem to go anywhere without his new friends, and they're not exactly pleasant company. Okay, straight to the point. Who hit you? She shakes her head. I know how this looks, but you don't understand. It's not like Pernisk. It's these new friends of his. They've brought out the worst in him. Tell me about these friends. They came into our house with their dead eyes and their black teeth. I'm not a fool. I know what it means. Pernisk makes me leave when they show up, but it's obvious what they come to do. What is this, drugs or something? Last time they came, I told them to get out. Let them have their fun somewhere in the gift, but not under my roof. She scowls and then winces, her fingertips gently probing her bruise. Here yeah, it is, drugs. Svef, it's a drug. Changes you, I guess. The Pernis guy knew wouldn't have squashed a spider. I never thought he'd... She trails off, still feeling the swollen, discoloured flesh. We know what Sveth is. Um... Yeah, perhaps a bit knowledgeable about the situation. Don't know how, I dare. To get enlightened us, but uh, yeah, makes people calm and listless, not violent. Kenra shrugs. I don't really know. <laughs> Seem better than believing he's always been this way. Well, maybe we should pop by and uh, have a wee talk. Her hand rests on the table and she clenches it into a white knuckled fist. There's nothing more to say to him. We're finished. I just want to give this back to him and have a clean break. She opens her hand and a ring 
clatters onto the table. It was his grandmother's. Even after this, I don't have the heart to sell it off. But if I go back there myself, I know what'll happen. I lose my temper and I'll probably wind up with another one of these. Again, pointing to the bruise. Okay, well, we'll take the ring and have a word as well. She looks at you and nods. The house is just north of here. Just please, don't hurt him. As furious as I am, I don't want that on my conscience. Well, of course, Fedora overheard, and the whole party overheard the whole conversation. Hey. And certainly, we do not disagree with Adair's thinking here. Anyway, upstairs, perhaps? Yes. <laughs> Ooh, really? I really cannot help. Perhaps when these guys were talking, uh, Nadog, not one for small talk, had a bit of a wander around and couldn't help but notice a large chest here, which requires some attention. You won't see me coming. I'll see it done. It's finished. Ah, right. Yes. Containing a ring. Oh, very nice. Look at that. Simple orange and grey ring glowing when you're not wearing it. Errol of Levi. Well, seeing as uh, he's the one that's gone and had a nosy about, he's the one that's going to equip it. And nobody need know. <laughs> nobody need know. Perhaps uh, somebody will notice that eventually. Where did you get the new ring from? Never you mind, he will say. Right upstairs. Okay, what do we have here? Variety of different people. Lots of people to talk to here. Just say the word. Abulia Mawa raises a hand in greeting. This chap is filling a spur off a small round bullet. Filing, rather. And this character nods at us. Pint in one hand and a mace slung over the shoulder. Okay, they're all just chilling Greetings. out. Oh, wait a second, this one. An old man relaxes with his feet propped on the table. Patches of dark brown skin peek out from under a full mane of blue-green hair. He and the Orland woman with him exchange laughs and comments with the trio at a nearby table, and he spins a dagger in his hand. His hazel eyes watch you. You look like you've seen a night or two in the wilds. Joining us for a drink? Asking who they are. The name's Two-Tone Weeksel. The lady next to me is Key. We've had our fun with the expeditions, but we were hoping to enjoy a little peace and quiet. For the next few weeks, anyway. The man at the next table nods at us. I'm Dreadshot Daden. This is Hurley and Ilfa. We were part of separate expedition teams, but we, we both suffered losses and decided to band together. He takes several items off his fingers. Beasts, barbarians, beer wicks. It's a dangerous time to be an adventurer, but a prosperous one too. On the next table, Dearden raises his glass. And here's to many more prosperous journeys. Uh, is there anything else you wanted? No, no, no. Enjoy your drinks. Enjoy your drinks. Lots of books. Lots of books. Hey. Hmm. And lots of rooms. Perhaps uh, Fedoran's scouting the rooms out to see which one he would like to stay in. And I can tell you now, Nadog is eyeing up these chests and footlockers 
mouth almost watering, but hey. in the presence of the group, not going to do anything foolish. And certainly with not people in the same room. Okay, it's just uh, loads of rooms. Okay, lovely. Always nice to cast an eye over the establishment. But, um, what time are we on? <clears throat> it's evening. Not time for bed just yet. Hey. Right then, so I think we need to uh, pay a visit to somebody. It's a matter of urgency, really. Before we do anything else... Pernisk. Next to the marketplace. So it's nearby. There you go. Pernisk's house. <coughs> marketplace. We'll pop to the marketplace first, just in case it closes, but... Um, uh, and then we'll head across there. And then there's also this lovely... Uh, Almost like an amphitheatre here. We'll have to take a look at this. See what it's all about. Bit of sightseeing. He's still up to mischief by the sounds of it. That is a market. Heritage Hill claims another curious soul. <clears throat> okay, so here is the the market. He won't see me coming. I'm kind of intrigued. Is there any sort of, is there any hidden items around town? So we got Laura here. Where you are? Nama. I assume these are uh, traders. In terms of markets, it's not, uh, not the biggest we've seen. I'm sure the ones in Old Vale are far, far uh, more exotic. With much more numerous uh, stalls and such. What can you do? Um, what is this building here? It's un unnamed. Can't actually enter, but uh, I'm just, just having a bit of a nosy. Again, being brave on his own could end up being mugged here in these back alleys. So this is the expedition hall. We'll visit that probably... Uh, after we've done with Pernisk. Greetings. Igrun stands behind a stall, polishing a broadsword. The patterned flesh around his eyes is crinkled with age, and the muscles in his arms are knotty and lean, but he holds the weapon with ease. He nods at us. Come to take a look? You won't find a finer collection of armour and weaponry in Defiance Bay. Outside Sonnilds, of course. Sonnilds? What's so special about Sonnilds? She operates in the expedition hall. He jerks a thumb over his shoulder. Sells the best equipment in the city. But Weenan keeps her on a short leash. Keeps her fine inventory reserved for chartered expeditionists, members of the dozens, and anyone else he takes a liking to. Mm. Must remember to get on Weenan's good side if you want the best equipment then, eh? Asking to have a look at what he's got for sale. I mean, everything's going to be out of our price range, I suppose. But you never know. So you've got your standard fare of weapons. With some that are slightly uh, more lucrative and uh, more imposing looking. I mean, look at this, for instance. Ooh. -hoo. But uh, out of our price range. Selection of armors again, some of the norm. 
Some slightly more uh, unique. Different styles of helmets. None of these, of course, will be gracing for Doran's head. Steel plate on your head. No flipping chance. The Dunred Demon. Huh. Not a prayer that anything like that would be touching his head. So uncouth. Thank you. Anyone you are. Greetings. Well met, traveller. Are you interested in purchasing any rations for your journey? Maybe. So this is the uh, the, the food vendor. Ooh, look at this. Dragon eggs and dragon meat. Holy moly. Rare and exotic. Oh, oh, oh. Dragon eggs? No way. And some of the more mundane stuff. Camping supplies. Okay, thank you. And who else we got here? Welcome. The young woman stands by a cat, watching the crowd with large bright eyes that focus on you as you approach. Take your time, traveller. If you're looking for enchanted scrolls or garb, you've come to the right place. Ah, now this might be a vendor that Tordoran takes more of an interest in. Oh, here we go. This is more like it. Rings. Again, expensive, but uh, I mean, goodness gracious me, look at this. Plus two second level spell uses. Plus one for... Oh, my gosh. Ho, ho, ho. You're damn right we want one of them. <laughs> 8,000 coin. And one for the priests as well. So we're not bothered about priests. <laughs> Spending company money on priests? No chance. Not when there's a ring like that on sale. Look at that. Scrolls. Different scrolls. Requires ten law. Oh my god. So we can actually cast some higher level spells than we can actually cast with um, ourselves if we've got a high enough law level. But again, just a little bit too pricey. And we've got some potions. Different potions, of course. Yeah, seeing all this stuff makes us feel very, very poor. It must be said. Very poor indeed. But no hats. I think Fedoran has got a thing for hats. I don't know. Perhaps I'd, perhaps he's trying to... Perhaps he may just try and see if he can not gather a collection of hats. One for every day of the week. Maybe. Hey. Have we found what he, what he really likes? <laughs> Some people it's axes. Some people might be boots. Trinkets. Alcohol. For Fedoran. Hats. Right, here we go. Got a feeling something's going to go down in this damn place. If they're all doing drugs, um, they're not going to hey. be friendly. They're not going to have their senses. So hey. we better prepare ourselves here. And we're going to be in an enclosed situation. Of course, for Doran relaying all this to his party as if he's uh, just uh, readying the troops for uh, for a big okay. war. No doubt some of them rolling their eyes. Come on. We're seasoned adventurers and warriors. They're a bunch of druggies. It's the worst that can happen. 